Welcome to the My First Program in POP tutorial. In this video, we will achieve some familiarity with the POP tool IDE. We will get used to some of the syntax that we have to deal with, see a couple of instructions, see the state of our system after it is simulated or during the simulation, and finally, we will see some helpful features provided by POP. So let's open up the tool and start a new project. Let's talk about the first line that is generated for us when we look at our new project. That is the line that starts with .org. You'll notice that it's highlighted in a purplish color. The PLP tool IDE has syntax highlighting, so you will see this throughout these tutorials. So this indicates that it is a, a, an assembler directive. And an assembler directive is different from the rest of the instructions that we'll see. The fact that it is a directive means that it isn't assembled into the actual executable program that runs when we simulate, but rather is a special instruction that indicates that something needs to be accomplished at the time the code is assembled. When your program is assembled into its corresponding ASM, which is the machine code that the processor can interpret and simulate it, it has to reside somewhere in memory. This is where the program counter comes into play. A program counter, or PC, is a special register that points to the actual location in memory where the next instruction resides. The PC is updated every clock cycle to keep pointing to the next instruction to be fetched for execution. The .org directive tells the assembler at which location in memory your program will be stored and where the program counter should start in order to fetch the first instruction of that program. Like many programming languages, it's probably best to start out with a pretty simple program. And even though the one that we're going to write will simply add two numbers, we will see later on that individual instructions don't really get much more complex and that even a simple add operation provides a lot of utility. So let's think of the statement in C or C++ or some other high-level language that of A equals A plus B. We know that this will be executed by adding A and B and then assigning the result to A. Luckily this maps pretty well to the assembly that we are using in the POP tool. If we type out ADU TO TO T1, we can look at the TO as A and T1 as B. The dollar sign indicates a reference to a register and all operations in POP must be performed on a register. To view the format of the instructions as well as other helpful information including the mnemonics we use for the registers, there is a handy quick reference guide included with the tool. This statement will add the contents of register T0 and the contents of register T1 together and then store the result into T0, overwriting whatever value was previously in the register. We could easily store this value into a third register if we wanted to retain the operands value, but it's important to note that we only effectively have 24 registers for multipurpose use, and if we don't need to retain its value, then we should overwrite it. You're probably wondering how we assign contents into the registers T0 and T1 to make this add statement meaningful. The li command, or load immediate, will allow us to accomplish this. Using load immediate, we can assign any 32-bit number we need this add instruction to operate on. Now let's have a look at what our program would look like in memory if it were assembled and loaded. Now we want to save the result to a memory location. For this, we need to use the instruction store word, or SW, which is a way for us to assign the contents of a register to a specified memory location. The memory address must be stored in a register for us to be able to utilize store word, and we will use load immediate again to accomplish this. When manually manipulating memory, we will use what is commonly known as the stack. The top of the stack represents the upper limit of the memory that we have access to and is what we will start with when storing words to memory. PLP tool utilizes byte addressing, and since PLP words are 32 bits long, memory addresses used must be in multiples of four, just like we saw in how the program is stored in memory. The syntax for store word starts with a register containing the word that you want to store, an offset followed by the register containing a memory location. 
The offset allows for the storage of multiple words in succession without having to change the address stored in the register. We will get into the offset in more detail in later tutorials. Since we have already stored a value to memory, let's say that we now need to retrieve it. StoreWord's counterpart is LoadWord, or LW. The LoadWord instruction will load a word to a register from a specified memory location stored in another register. As you can see, this is quite similar to how StoreWord works in reverse. One major difference to note is the swapped location of the registers. The store word instructions first parameter is the register whose contents you wish to store in the memory location held by the second parameter register. With load word the first parameter is the destination register for the content stored at the memory location stored in the second parameters register. This includes an offset just like the store word With this loaded value from memory, we can now operate on the register just as we did with the add instruction. Instead of adding it though, let's use a new instruction of subtract. The syntax, syntax for subtract is the same as addition, except that the last parameter to be subtracted from the second parameter. So in this case, T1 will be subtracted from T2 and stored into T0. So basically, our entire program will add 15 and 25 together, store the results in a memory location. It will then load that stored result and subtract 11 from it. The final result of our program will be in register T0. Now let's assemble and simulate the program. To assemble the program, we click the duct tape symbol, which will, like we previously discussed, generate the instructions in a format that the processor will understand. Here's what the instructions that we saw earlier would actually look like after being assembled. Now we will go ahead and click the blue sim button to enter simulation mode. You will see that a bunch of new buttons showed up at the top of your editor. You will see some buttons that are associated with the simulation itself and then also some of these more colorful ones to the right, which are the memory mapped IOs that are available by default with TLP. We will discuss each of these memory mapped IOs in the tutorial that pertains to those. What is interesting to us right now is the watcher window. This is where we will see the state of any memory address or register in order to validate the processing of the instructions that we wrote. Let's open up this window and add all the registers and memory addresses that we used in the program. First we'll add the one memory location that we utilize. Next we'll need to change the drop down menu selection to register from bus and add S0, T0, T1, and T2 registers to the list. You can see on the right the value of the contents that these registers hold. Now we will go ahead and simulate the program by clicking the button with the double green arrows and view the final state of our system. You can also step through your program by a specified number of cycles with the step button, which is very useful in debugging, and this will also be covered in more detail in later tutorials. As you can see, the result of the add is stored properly in the memory location that we used, and the correct final result is in register T0. It is important to note that even after loading the value from memory, that the value is still in the memory location and will remain there until overwritten. The same thing also applies for each register. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. 